So now this is the part two of our study of Daniel. We're at Tin Bete Daniel or the prophecy of Daniel, chapter seven, verse nine. And we're concerned with the first uh, phrase or Zufano Ayo. Now as we explained already, let's just catch up with we went to the King James, it says I be held to the thrones were cast down the comma right there and then the Jewish or the Hebrew version that we have right here has this translation has verse 9 I beheld till the thrones were placed were placed so the big difference here is I beheld till the thrones were placed what the Jews have in there interpretation translation and the King James has I beheld till the thrones were cast down and what we've noticed is that if you just rely on the King if you deep end if you deep end or depend on the King James Version you will reading this in context you will, might interpret this as some of us have before checking it out deeper that Donnell kept looking until these thrones were cast down. But if you read it in the context, let's just go one page over and begin over here. This is chapter 7, the vision of Daniel. It's talking about the beast vision of Daniel. And if you scroll down right here, it's talking about the world empire of Nebuchadnezzar or Nebuchadnezzar. Then it talks about the world empire of Media, Persia. And then it's talking about the world empire of Greece under Iskander or Alexander the Greek or Macedonian. Then it talks about the Roman world empire at verse 7 of chapter 7. Then down here it talks about, beginning at verse 8, the ten kings and the little horn. Where if we pick up from verse 8, it says, I consider the horns and be... Hold, there came up among them another little horn, before whom there were three of the first horns plucked up by the roots. And behold, in this horn were eyes like the eyes of man, and a mouth speaking great things. Now, in the Schofield Study Bible, they put this break right here to help to explain it, similar to what the Jews do in their um, footnotes, the Heavenly Tribunal. The Heavenly Tribunal, verses 9 to 14. King James has right here at verse 9, the vision of the coming of the Son of Man, yes, so Lige, in glory. And then he compares that with Matthew and Revelation 19. So if you're reading this in context and you come to King James' translation, I beheld to the thrones were cast down and the Ancient of Days did sit, you might think that this part up to the comma is talking about these world empires being cast down and after they're all destroyed then the ancient of days whether one interprets it as God or as Christ comes and sits down but they have a problem because the ancient of days is not the son of man you know what I'm saying and, and, and there's God and there's the son there's the father and the son who is being spoken of here in Daniel the Old Testament now this is why we say this is dubious. I beheld till the thrones were cast down. And we said, let's bring this to our brothers and sisters and those interested. Because the Jews, the Jewish version here, gives you a more accurate, I beheld till the thrones were placed. And one of the ancient of days, and, and, and one that was ancient of days did sit. Now, if you look at that footnote down here, as we covered in the first part, thrones they say the plural is sometimes used in an abstract sense like the judicial bench and then they have Psalm 22 and 5 if taken as an ordinary plural it indicates the seats of the heavenly assessors acting in the name of the supreme judge who they were is a matter on which commentators differ some hold that there were only two thrones one for God and the other for the Moshiach, or the Mashiach, or Christos, the Messiah. Others say that the assessors were angels who recorded events in the heavenly books. Understanding 
that this comes out of, we can say, Egypt, or at least from Moses, you know what I'm saying, that Moses was learning all the wisdom of the Egyptians, we look over here to what is often called the judgment scene, or Ani, which is interesting because Ani in the Hebrew, Ani means I, like Inne, Ana in the good is Ani, Inne means I, or my, or I heart being weighed in the balance, and Ani right here was the, was, to represent each individual. That's why his name was Ani, like Ana, like Inne. And here's the judgment scene with the 42 assessors, the thrones, and you see all of them are on thrones. You see carefully, all of them are on thrones. All of them are on thrones. And they're acting on behalf of the supreme judge according to the Egyptian or the Kemetian, and this is Osar, wearing the Atef crown and sitting in state and sitting in judgment over this scene that we have Donnell beholding in another type, we can say. But this now explains it in context. Now, where we were with them hard, we were over here in Timbete Donnell, chapter 7, Zufano Chimiski Zeregu de Resayo, and explain that this first portion right here, and thrones, until they were zufano chim and thrones, is ki zeregu de res, until they were prepared, is ki zeregu de res, ayo. Now, down here in this program, the IOTA um, software, it has the King James Version, I beheld to the thrones were cast down. Then it has the KJV with Strong's numbers, and then it breaks down each part of the each part of the verse. And what we want to click on is the 7412 to see what appears over here. The Strong's Hebrew Greek Dictionary, or Rima, or Rimo, Rimo. Now they say this is Aramaic. Well, part of Daniel is in Aramaic, and part of it's in Hebrew. Half of the book Aramaic. Half of the book is Hebrew. So that means the Aramaic is not the Hebrew. The Hebrew is not the Aramaic. But here in the Aramaic, it says corresponding to 7411, and they have to throw. It can mean to throw. It can also mean to set. Figuratively. Now, you notice that in, in the parentheses? It says figuratively. That means in a verbal hieroglyphic or in a parable or in a simile. It says assess, to assess. Then after the colon, hyphen, hyphen, cast, or to cast down, or to impose. Now, they say it's similar to the 7411. Let's click on 7411 or Arama or Aroma, Aroma, Arama. It's a primitive root. It means to hurl specifically, to shoot figuratively to delude or betray as if causing to fall. Beguile, betray, bow, 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 men, carry, deceive, throw. Now, some would say, well, cast down is still accurate in that sense. But it's interesting that the Jews have a different translation, and Amharic agrees here more with the Hebrew, and the Hebrew more with the Amharic, although the Amharic is very much clearer. And in many other instances in this book of Donnell, the Amharic is surprisingly clearer where you read the footnotes of the Jews and the Christians, some things they argue and the commentators don't really understand what it's really talking about. But here, Zufano is Kizaregu, because it means to spread, to spread or to, in a sense, to pre prepare, something spread out, something prepared until they were prepared. It's similar to when it says that the books were opened. The books were opened. Now, this particular portion, this particular verse, is very easy to explain in Rastafari Revelation, because this is he, this is the Ancient of Days, upon the throne of great King David. You can see here in the resurrection or in the renewal, as Abba Kedus, 
and you can see right there the white woolly here. And then we have a very good example that we want to show right here. The last, one of the last known upon the throne pictures of his imperial majesty. And if we go over here, we see his imperial majesty. We can see the hair is white like wool. And this particular picture was imperial majesty with his only faithful servant in those last days is covering his face. Now, this part, interestingly enough, is fulfilled in the book of Hosea, this, this picture, this particular scene. But here you see the Ancient of Days, here white as wool, sitting upon that true biblical throne of great King David, and the throne of David is the throne of Jehovah in the Scriptures. So we wanted to show you this as well. So now when we put all this together from the wisdom that Moses was learned in, we now can understand when the psalm says concerning the thrones of the great King David. Let's bring that one up. That's a favorite psalm for many of us. And it says, there are set thrones. Thrones of what? Thrones of judgment. Even the thrones of great King David. Now, when we put all this together, it's very easy to understand the true story. And then when we compare it with the make-believe or the make-believe story that they try to give us, it doesn't make any sense. Now, here is Psalm, here is Psalm 137, right? Is it, is it, is it, is it, is it, um, 137, well, 137 is also, is also part of it, uh, let's see, um, 